How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Xbox One and how to install emulators inside of it. Now I've been reading the comments and I have been uh, been asked from the community that how do I install emulators on the Xbox One. I've been covering Kodi and uh, I found out that it's just not possible. I was able to get Kodi into Xbox One and it just doesn't work. However, I did find a solution and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So if you notice that my screen is different than yours, it's because I'm in dev mode. Uh, you might have seen it, you might have not, but dev mode is an app on your Xbox One that you can find on the Microsoft Store, and it's a free download. Once you get into it, you would follow the on-screen instructions on how to get it. Now, I'm not going to be doing that for the sake of this video because installing the games and doing the process of putting our emulators is kind of a lengthy process, and I want to be able to... Uh, get the show rolling without having such a long video so I'm sorry about that but however if you follow the on-screen instructions it'll take you to it'll tell you where you need to go and also if you're still lost you can do a simple Google search like so I'll show you real quick how to activate dev mode Xbox one I, I literally googled that same that same words and it prompted me to the first uh, link here and you would be able to scroll and look at what uh, you would need and how to do it. So just to explain some things, I have a newer Xbox One and uh, my on-screen instructions will be different than from this page. However, I'm putting this page because uh, where I needed to be did help me out uh, better than what I went through as my experience when I installed Dev App. So as you're installing Dev App, you would be prompted with here. Before here, it's going to tell you that you're going to need Windows 10 and Windows Studio and I think something else. However, I am on Windows 8.1, just, so just to let you know, you do not need to have Windows 10 to make this work. Um, it still works with Windows 10, however, we don't need the Windows Studio app. So I'm not sure if Windows 10 is only because Windows Studio is for Windows 10 only. I'm not sure. But however, in order to get where we need to go, we don't need any Windows 10 or Windows Studio app. I am on Windows 8.1. We are March 18, 2019. So my Xbox, I bought it about four days ago. It's pretty new. Uh, so I, I I didn't have any issues. That's what I'm trying to say. And you shouldn't be worried about if it prompts you if you need a Windows 10. However, on this screen, it's not showing you because it's an older website. but ultimately you'll end up here now this web address up here did not work for me yours is gonna be different if it's a newer Xbox but it didn't work for me either when I put input it it gave me an error however I'm showing you this website because on here if you look right here open your PC web browser to this if you click on it it'll take you exactly where you need to go so I'll leave a link in the description where this website is however it was a simple Google search and you would sign into your Microsoft account that you have if you haven't made one then you would need to make one then you would be sent to here and uh, the only downfall with our process here today is that you'd have to pay $20 for a Microsoft license there is no work around it the only way to activate dev app is to have the Microsoft license um, that's as good as it gets right now it's $20 but that's a one-time fee and uh, it's the only way we're going to be able to move forward. So if you are still interested, if you still do it, you'd pay the $20, then you'd be here to manage your Xbox One consoles, and then you would put activate, and it would bring you here. So once you get here, then you would put in the code that you have on your screen, on your Xbox screen, and you would put that, then it would take you down here to it's almost done, then it's been activated. So now you would switch and restart to your dev mode and you'd be into this page right here. So this looks different than mine because I think this website's older and it's an older model Xbox One. So mine looks like this. So let's say eventually you're here. So this is great. This is good. So now you're in dev mode and now we're ready to put in our apps. So you're gonna need these apps right here let's go back to my home screen and um, let's get out of here 
Oh, we need to activate some things on the Xbox. I'm sorry. So you're here on the Xbox. Uh, first things you want to do is you're gonna want to go to your settings because I think it automatically does not put you on network. So you would go to launch settings on your settings tab. Then you would go to network right here, and then sign into your router or your device that you're on. If everything goes well, then everything goes well. You're signed in. You should be prompted up above, above my head, uh, the URL, the IP address that your Xbox is using. And um, then from there, you would go back home. And then here, you're going to want to um, go to remote access. See this? So this remote access tab, then down here, you're going to go to remote access settings. Now here, this is uh, important because you need this to access uh, from your computer. You can access your Xbox One. Now here you would click, it's already highlighted for me, but you would click on enable device portal. And then um, under it, it would say go to this web address. I would use the HTTPS.192.168 and uh, I would use that better than the Xbox One colon 11443. Uh, I would use that better. Now the only risk of having that is you know people can get into your stuff and mess with your Xbox however if you go one more tab down you would see authentication and here it would be where you would require a username and a password in order to get into your dev mode from your browser so this is a lot safer in the sense that you would um, have your username and password on your own and nobody would be able to get to it and except for yourself so you would go down and put set password set username and password it would it'd pop up and I've already done it for myself so I wouldn't need to once you're done you would go click OK or save what whatever it is and then when you're done with that you can just go ahead and click on close now here beside my head on remote access you would see that web address and then you would go to your browser it doesn't matter which one Internet Explorer Chrome or Firefox they all work the same however my Firefox is already set up and I want you to see what it's gonna prompt when you do it for the first time so I'm gonna put HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192 it's already there since I've tried it before so let's go ahead and go in here so now it's gonna prompt and say your connection is not private attackers might steal your information but uh, we'll just go to advanced down here um, I think on Firefox is gonna say set an exemption and you would go to OK and right here this is proceed to here so it's unsafe yes but however we did install or we did set a password and a username so since I'm on mine uh, if you're on the same page as I am go ahead and put yours in um, remember it is also case sensitive so if you have any capital letters remember to put that as well and then once that's in then you can go ahead and get into your your device portal so now we're in in our Xbox one device portal like so so your screen should look like mine if not then I would check for the URL web address just to make sure that everything was fine and done right so now we've already done on um, pretty much halfway we're we're good to go now to install our things the next thing you want to do is if you see right right here where's it at right here right here it says my my email you're gonna have to have your Xbox live test account on you're gonna have to have that in order to uh, to enter any of these settings so you would go to add user or create one but I'm using the one that I made for my Xbox one account it has to be the one that you made your um, Microsoft license the one you paid for 
So if you use that email to pay for the license, you would use your email here. And you would click check and on your Xbox it would say uh, welcome like your Xbox would normally do if you're signing on regularly. So if you look on the Xbox, on my test accounts, mine is already checked. So if you haven't done so, then you would check it. I just unchecked it on accident. So there you go. Just showing you, I guess, that it's that it's working. And uh, now we're actually good to go. So now we're able to put in things. So I'm going to go back here. You can leave your Xbox alone now. Most of the, everything's going to be on the computer. So let's go back to our computer. Now uh, you're going to have to install. You're going to have to install your emulator. In this case, I'm using RetroArch. However, RetroArch has not uh, made an Xbox version for this yet. This is a RetroArch version for Windows that's been converted into a Xbox format. Um, it's not easy to get to. You would need to do it yourself. However, I do. I'm going to put a link in the description on where you can get it from my media fire. Also, uh, on here, I'm going to have um, as a link in the description a link to the PlayStation system files and you're going to need these in order to play PlayStation games. So once you download them from my media fire you can make a, a folder like I did. I made Xbox One. I dragged my zip files into here and what I did was I just right clicked use the zip uh, software that you have. If you don't have one I would suggest suggest uh, 7-zip that is very common uh, zip file software that's out there and it's also free. I'm using WinZip so mine's going to be different but the process is the same. Yours would say yours would say 7-zip right here then you would just click on extract to here. Once you extract to here you'll get these folders. If you do extract to here on both you'll get these two folders. Now on your web browser you would go to click on add and then on your folder where you put your RetroArch you would click on click on the RetroArch folder not the zip file the folder that you extracted and you would drag your RetroArch folder onto here just as plain and simple as that then you would click on next and it's going to ask for dependencies so now you would go ahead and click on dependencies and same thing just drag and drop it to here and click on start now the installation is pro progress has begun and we're just waiting for it now while we're here I'm gonna be let you know that my setup is I'm not on Wi-Fi I have my computer and my Xbox one uh, connected to my router because depending on how good your router is and how good your speeds are it's gonna determine how fast your games are gonna be put inside your system so I got to find out that smaller games like SNES and Sega and NES their small folders files and uh, it doesn't take that long to install them but Xbox games are really big files and uh, they'll take a little bit longer to install so I did uh, as a tip if you want you can uh, put your Xbox one and your computer directly to the router and it's a big uh, it's a faster process believe me However, sometimes, well, my router does isn't that good. Uh, so sometimes there are good routers out there that can power fast speeds uh, in Wi-Fi range. But in my sense, my router is not that good, and I have to connect it direct. So that's just a tip. You don't have to do it, but if you wanted to, you could. And just wait for it to install. Once we finish the installation here, we will go ahead and go into retro uh, retro art on our Xbox one and we're gonna do the first initial setup on the retro arch so we can get uh, things going with that should pop up soon that it's been successfully installed I haven't had any issues at all this would be my third Xbox that I'm gonna be doing but if you look on the screen it says installation progress is successfully 
registered. So right here on my apps, games and apps, I have Retro Arch already installed. If you look on your Xbox, you'll have Retro Arch already installed too. I dropped my controller. And Retro Arch is right here down here on the bottom. So once you have Retro Arch installed, you're going to need to go into it and let's do our initial setup just to get things going here. If you're not signed into your Xbox test account, you will not have uh, access to your root files in the RetroArch and you cannot put games in it. So let's go to Online Updater. And then uh, you would go to Update Core Info Files. And that's pretty quick, but the update assets uh, will take a little bit longer. So you go in and you see in the bottom of my head, it's been downloading the assets. And uh, this is important for the first trial because there's different builds of RetroArch and we're, we got to update it. So now we're updating it here. It's going to glitch out your screen, but don't worry. We're just going to do a simple restart. And uh, we'll go back into dev mode and then we'll go right back into retro arch. So, first things first, you're going to want to go ahead and go to settings, one tab over, and then go down to input, and then go down to menu toggle gamepad combo. On here, it says none, but you wouldn't, uh, my favorite thing to do is uh, start and select. And the reason why we're doing this is uh, so that way when you're playing a, a game, a ROM, you would push start and select and you would toggle the in-game menu and you would be able to adjust settings, you would be able to load save game files, also close the game from here. If you don't do this, then you're going to have to push home and then go to RetroArch, then go to options on there, then quit RetroArch completely. If you don't do it like I'm showing you right now, then uh, you would have to get out of retro arts completely then get back in as far as here we can play as, as much as we want and do whatever we want with that uh, I did notice that every time you quit retro arch you're gonna have this the sometimes it saves sometimes it doesn't save settings and your uh, start and select function will not work anymore so I suggest every time you do it it's a little bit annoying but I suggest that you go into that setting that input setting and look for that that setting and see if uh, if it's not toggled again so it's already toggled here for us and so now we're ready to put in our games however um, I can't tell you where to get the games or how to get the games however a uh, simple Google search again uh, you would put whatever this ROM on Google and for what system and you probably you'd find a lot of searches but I can't tell you that however I already have games on my computer set up and I'm ready to install them myself so for the sake of this video I'm gonna install a MAME an SNES an NES a Sega and a PlayStation just so we can make sure everything's running fine oh now that I said PlayStation you're gonna wanna go to your device portal we're going to go to File Explorer. Then we're going to go to Local App and Data. And here on RetroArch, uh, you click on RetroArch. Then you would click on Local State. And here's where we're going to be putting our games on Downloads. But for, for the PlayStation, you're going to want to you're going to want to put in the system files. So if you have that folder that I uh, from my from my website that you got my files from, you would have PlayStation system files, and this is the only way you're going to be able to get your your PlayStation to play these games. So you would click on choose file, then you would look for your file where you have your Xbox. So I have mine here, PlayStation system files, and you can't do them all at once. You'd have to do them one by one. So let's do one this one first, then this one second, 
then this one third. Now we have uh, PlayStation system files in our RetroArch and we shouldn't have any issues playing any PlayStation games. Let's go back here and then now let's go to downloads and here's where you put all your games and ROMs. Now I have experience that um, when you install games you're gonna need to put in they ask you to to unzip these and put in the files single but if you unzip them they are big files so I did find out that you don't have to do that for the MAME, the SNES and the Sega you would have to do that for the PlayStation though. I haven't found a work around it but you know everybody's favorite game is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time and you would just do a simple drag and drop course choose file you would go to your games then MAME I thought it was like the other way you can drag and drop but you can't so go to ROMs and I'm gonna install Turtles in Time and like I said depending on how fast your internet browser is it's gonna be how fast it is look so my file right here is 3.6 megs the PlayStation file is gonna be like maybe six 300 to 600 megs so if it's taking a long time there is no load bar when you're doing uploads so don't worry about it just upload it click it once and just leave it alone and it will install and I'll show you what I mean right now so let's do one meme let's do an SNES let's do what uh, Galaga I keep forgetting that you can't do it here SNES Galaga in there so mine's going really fast yours might be, might be going really slow depending on your internet speeds and your Wi-Fi your router and stuff so we have that now let's go to SNES um, let's do Donkey Kong Let's do Sega Genesis, um, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and then uh, what was the last one? A PlayStation game. Oops. PlayStation. CD images. Yours might say ROMs. Mine says CDI images. That's what the file came with the uh, when I downloaded my emulator. Yours is going to be different because you're downloading the actual game to your download folder. So yours might just look like like this. You might have an ISO. You're going to have to, you know, unzip the ISO and and get the bin and the Q file. You're going to have to put both bin and Q files. Sometimes it'll come with just the bin file but this one came with both and if you have both then do both so let's click upload it's it said 333,000 kilobytes that's about 333 megabytes so depending on how long that takes is how long it's going to take so we can just let that go and leave that alone let's go back into our Xbox and from here we're good to go we can just go down to load content and then go down to your downloads where you put in your games and here you have your games already so let's start with Donkey Kong Country the reason why I want to show you this is because there's a lot of emulators and a lot of them won't work a lot of them will work so this is an SNES so let's go all the way down to Nintendo so, so if you notice here SNES there's Bones, there's Beetle, there's this and that but a, a real nice good one is the SNES 9X I would look for the latest version I think it's 2010 and you would go ahead and click on it and if it doesn't crash it would play your game let me make sure that it's not so loud and the cool part about the RetroArch is that it already sets all your button configuration to what you're looking for so there you go um, we did the start and uh, we did the start and select 
so you would push start and select together at the same time and you would bring in this option menu and here you can uh, take a screenshot and you can uh, you know do a save game you can load your last save game you can do other kinds of things however I'm gonna just go to close content so we can try a different game out now if it doesn't work for you the first time you would just change emulators so go back to downloads future cop just went in we can go back to my computer and we can put in the Q file now it's a very small file so that'll work however I did notice that when you are playing an emulator on the Xbox you would need to do the the bin files the bin files are the games so we did that let's do Galaga I usually use quickness works for me pretty good and Galaga is working here and same thing you push start and select you can get in and out now this build is for Windows it's not for Xbox so it might be a little choppy however I'm not having any uh, bad experiences everything's working fine not even a lag you can adjust the settings for latency also pixels and uh, you can overclock the CPU for the retroarch and make things look better or run smoother you would have to just mess with the settings on your own so let's just do a PlayStation now uh, for here I think there should be two if not there might just be one so here there's only one PlayStation uh, unfortunately if you're gonna have to put in another core a lot of people use the Beetle but uh, if it didn't work for you you can have to look for another core or PlayStation but this one worked for me also all my other files that I've done haven't failed me with this emulator so everything works just fine so I think it's pretty cool. Now we're playing PlayStation on an Xbox. Check out the irony on that. So let's do start and select. Let's get out of here. And let's do a main. Also, remember how your games before you install them I suggest that you would change the way they're named so mine is a uh, lazy name TMNT2 it doesn't know you you know for if you don't know your games you're gonna have, uh, if you do the SNES version it's gonna be the same file TMNT2 dot zip so you wouldn't know which one is for the SNES or the main and you're gonna have issues there so I suggest you uh, rename them however look there's different kinds of memes you would have to just try all the memes until one works unfortunately that's as good as it gets uh, each meme game will be different to the meme emulator um, so I'm gonna try 2003 uh, other ones probably will not work so this one looks like it's going to work and uh, it's what I like about the memes is that you can you can push the back one of the back triggers if you push them if you push them both then you input the memes uh, the memes actual input so you can actually change the input of the game you can make the game easier you can make the game harder you can also change your button configuration to your liking however retroarch is pretty good about having the games set up to their button configuration already uh, normally so that's that uh, what I like about the meme is that you can put as much coins as you want so if you remember the old school arcade games you would have to put a lot of quarters now you have infinite amounts so if you never beat the game you're gonna beat it today let's close that so I assume you get the the point there of what I'm trying to do now Sonic the Hedgehog would be the same you'd find the the game for it uh, and the emulator and everything should be fine now uh, that's pretty much it you would use this you would use your browser you would put in usually when you sign out when you sign in from the Xbox you would have uh, different kinds of things but you 
you have your setup here you would put your games as you'd want for whatever reason you can put in you can take out and stuff but there's one more important thing that I'd like to explain to you before we end this video and I'm gonna set my Xbox when you exit out of dev mode you're gonna um, you're gonna fall onto this option when you get out so let's get out of this let's quit retroarch and let's go back into dev home let's go back into dev home now we're here you want to go back to your game and go back to your I don't know you have Netflix or Hulu or your retail games like Black Ops and Fortnite or Apex whatever's now you can only play them on retail mode right now we're on dev mode so you cannot play any of your apps here so it's just a setting as go to leave dev mode however you need to pay attention to what it says above the OK it says delete side loaded games you want to make sure that that is always unchecked every single time you do this because if you leave it checked you're gonna exit out of dev mode and you're gonna erase all the progress you just did today so you would uncheck it and click OK and your Xbox should go back into regular dev I mean regular retail mode but that's pretty much it guys uh, everything worked out just fine uh, on my end if you have any issues I stay up to date with comments and you can let me know on what worked for you what didn't work for you if it did work for you that's great the thumbs up is always appreciated if you like my content the subscribe is always appreciated I do cover other things such as Cody and you can have the movies and TV shows for free that are from the theater or that's on TV right now also I cover the fire stick and I put the same things on there as well and um, that's pretty much it guys uh, if you like the video thumbs up if you have any issues let me know and I'll try and help you as best I can but uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one